Uh, hello, folks. You're all very welcome back to the Talk from the Terrace on Celtic Fanzine TV and also available on audio on the Celtic Soul podcast. Today, I'll be chatting to Norwegian but Irish based Celtic fan Rennie Hansen. Uh, Rennie, it's your first time on the, on the show. Uh, good pals. Uh, we travelled uh, together in a taxi from Morphy's last week to uh, Celtic Park and. One thing you told me in that taxi was that if we didn't win on Thursday night, that we would face an uphill battle in Norway. So, firstly, can you just give me your thoughts on last Thursday night? Last Thursday night was a big disappointment, of course, because I felt Celtic didn't turn up or Buda Glimt had done the homework properly. So, But it was a big disappointment, of course. It was a big disappointment. And, and one of the things, Rennie, was, you know, we spoke um, on Thursday about Boda Glimp being in their pre-season, um, the strength of Norwegian football, how well they'd done. Um, and, but we were confident. And we were second best then for 90 minutes. Yeah, no, uh, as I said... Firstly, they have a very good manager, and he obviously he does his homework properly because it didn't look like a team that was off season when they met us. But the work rate they put in, and but the physics and the way they played, and even they have lost nearly half of the team from last season. He looked for players that can go in and do the same thing for a role. He doesn't. They only look for so. No, but. <sighs> I was disappointed and I was surprised. I, I didn't expect Buda to be so good because I saw them four or five games last season in the Wisden League and it was good. They're really good. And of course, they're the league champion two years in a row. And yeah, it tells all. When you look at the Norwegian League, Renny, and you are probably... Well, the only person that I know outside of Norway that has has a great knowledge of um, the Norwegian league. I mean, you look at Bodo. Um, when you look at Norwegian football in, in general, where is Norwegian football compared to Scottish football? I will say the Scottish league is a little little bit better, but at the two top teams in Scottish league are. Over a season better than a recent team, but in the last couple of seasons, you can say Rosenborg and Molde have disappointed. But with the money in Molde and Rosenborg have, they should be light year ahead of the rest of the league. So what he have done in, in Buda with nearly no money is unbelievable. But I will say there is only three team in Norway that is good now, and that's the Rosenborg Molde. And Buda Glimt. And yeah, that would, I would say the Scottish League is better than the Norwegian League. And did you, did you uh, read up? Um, I'm getting a bit of feedback here, Renny, sorry. Did you, get, did you read up on any of the um, Norwegian reports from the game? Ah, oh, yeah, of course. It's. But I. I had to, and and uh, no, the, the Norwegian media, of course, they are very, very proud of Bodeglimt, but and they said it like it was that Bodeglimt was far better team. There was, they, of course, they they put a little bit extra on it. They outplayed Celtic, but I'm not agreeing with that. But uh, the, the media is it's uh, it's very positive to. To, to, to Budaglint in Norway and that's not only the local media but the, the national newspapers and then uh, they uh, they give them broad coverage it's a lot to read yeah and one thing we did say Rennie as, as well um, was that you know they, they were in the pre-season and maybe naively we were thinking oh they won't be as fit as our players our players are well into the season they did they did cramp up near the end of the end of the game now whatever it was play acting or they were they were physically exhausted. They looked a bigger team than us. Um, they, they looked very organised. But maybe they had been planning for this game for a long time, where we have been playing two games a week, 
And yeah, maybe Europe isn't a priority. No, they, they had the plan for this game for three months. You know, that's the only only game they have planned for. And uh, they spent, they were three weeks before they arrived in Glasgow in Mabea. You know, and they played, uh, I think, a Russian team and a Romanian team. So, no, they was well prepared as you can see. And <laughs> I'm disappointed and surprised. Yeah, and, and, and then, Randy, really, right, so two charter flights sold out to heading for Bodo, and then I see I see fans now already, on, on, some there and some on their journeys. It's generally, when I looked at it, it was three flights there and three flights back. Um, it's a long journey. What can, what can Celtic fans expect when they uh, get to Bodo? Oh, they firstly they will be very welcome. They the border people will take care of them and and uh, yeah, the people is very nice. And uh, but the scenery is spectacular up there. It's it's all by the sea, so you go far north, but you won't get it Baltic. So I think the middle middle temperature in this time of year is about zero degrees, and it could be windy, but the scenery as they will is breathtaking if, if you uh, if you take a trip around Buda and, and yeah it's breathtaking and, and uh, yeah as I said it's far north but it's not the North Pole if you know what I mean because they they, they have the uh, a coastal climate but if you if you go in the inland you can easily get minus 30 up there so. but Buda is nice it's a uh, I'd say it's like Ireland on a winter day. And uh, when you've when you've done your sightseeing, um, hotels are quite expensive, and it's going to be expensive for a point. Yeah, expensive, fourteen, fifteen pounds or something. <laughs> but but you're you're originally not far from that area. No, I'm. Uh, we used to say I'm from the neighbor of the city. It's only 240 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we used to go to Buda to watch Buda Glimpse. No, on a day trip, only four and a half hour each way. So that's our neighbor. Uh, north of Norway, 250 kilometers, that's next to nothing. Well, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, I suppose it's like going to, you know, maybe Aberdeen and your bus breaking down for now. <laughs> <laughs> from Glasgow and, and how do you see how do you see the game playing out Rennie over there it's a plastic pitch isn't it a plastic pitch and uh, no the, the stadium is sold out but it's it's only 4,600 and there's a 400 Celtic supporters up there so it will be a good atmosphere but I'm not afraid for the plastic pitch we know how to play Maybe it's just better. You never know. But uh, if we score our early goal, the, the, we can win this game. Of course, we can. Uh, and, yes. uh, and really, like, well, as as, as Anne said, it's, it's only half time, and it's going to be. It is a tough old trip to go. It's it's a tough away game. Um, what, what's what's the you said the stadium only holds over four thousand. What's what's the stadium like and the infrastructure around the stadium? I uh, it's only uh, one stand. I think they have roof, and of course they will place the Celtic supporter on the stand with no roof. And uh, it's a uh, it's not a nice stadium, you know, if you know what I mean. But uh, that that's what they have. But it, it will be a good at- atmosphere. It's sold out then. It's probably they could probably have sold eight thousand tickets to that game easily. So, so the secret behind this team is the manager. Yes, yes, and the manager and the way he wants to play football and the kind of players he bring into the team. And yeah, yeah, uh, the top scorer they had last season he was a flop in Rosenborg. He was a big, big talent, and they brought him in. Rosenborg and he couldn't do anything and Rosenborg sent him away to Starbuck 
he couldn't do anything there either, but he was still a talent. And then he brought him to Boda and suddenly he was the top scorer in the league. But he is old. He's away now. I think <laughs> I think he went to a Russia club. So they've made a couple of quid as well. Yes, and they uh, they sold the, the the player of the year, Patrick Berg, to Lance in France. They got millions for him. And I think they sold uh, Frederick Björkman to Hertha Berlin. You know, so in Norwegian scale, they are loaded now for a couple of seasons. Because even I remember when when a couple of years ago, Molde went to the group stage in Europa League. You know, we laugh off that money, but that. For a recent club, that was like they had money for a couple of seasons. So, so they they have a lot to play for. It's not honor and the money, even Conference League money. It's big money in, in the recent scale. But on paper, Renny, we, we we should be able to compete over there, and we should, be, you know, it's very important. Um, first goal. Yeah, if we had a fourth goal, you know, we only need two goals to take it to extra time. That's the way I look at it. I like your positivity. You know, a lot of fans yeah. I spoke to after the game and on Sunday, um, they've, they they see you know Europe as a distraction this year because the Champions League is is waiting for the champions of Scotland this year and the riches that brings. Now, financially... <laughs> Every club needs more money, but Celtic are, are, are in a good position because of the players they sold last year. You know, the interim the interim um, reports suggest that you know a couple of million now in the kitty from the from the Eddie sale and the sale of AR. Now across the city, Rangers have or their Rangers or Selfco or whatever we're calling them now. They have kind of gone for a boom or bust approach. Um, to, to this season and, and last season and last season it worked for them mm. they, they're not showing any profits now, the sale of that kid to Everton may show something up but you know, it's so important it's so important Rennie that we win that we win the league this year because not only will it be worth a lot of money to us but it will you know sink the Rangers even further into Oh, the financial yeah. abyss. Yeah, and, and in that context, of course, I always want us to win games, but I'm not disappointed if you're knocked out for a conference league. You know, it's for me, it's it's kind of okay for me. In one way, I'm disappointed because we lost for a, for a missing team. You know, I, I will get it for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> But that, that's part and parcel of, you know, like you, you were always going to get it from your, from your friends back home in Norway. Oh, yeah. I got that. I, I couldn't be bothered to open Facebook the day after because I knew it was there. I knew. <laughs> Asked me to explain. I didn't want to explain. I only, I, I, I only, I only typed the best team won. That's it. So. Well, I, I, no one could argue with that. Now, Rennie, just just before we move on to SBL action, can you just give give uh, the listeners and the viewers a little intro into yourself and and how why Celtic? Oh, why Celtic? It's a it's a long but good good story. In in uh, in my hometown in the early seventies, there was you had to be uh, twelve year to get into organized football. And there was one man in my hometown. He thought this was wrong. So he had an idea and he tried to do something. And he started with, to write a letter to clubs worldwide. Then he asked for tops. And a lot of this club responded and actually sent him tops for teams. So he got tops for Dynamo Kiev, Inter Milan, Real Madrid, Ajax, Arsenal. Celtic, you know, and over suburban, over part of the town, we got the Celtic tops. So every kid in my neighborhood, the only team we want to play for was Celtic. And every kid I know in my, when I grew up, the first football top we had, we had all, was a Celtic top. And what so, year would that be? 
1972, I think, I was picked to the team as a reserve. I didn't get a game. But in 1975, I became lead league champion. Oh, wow. Wearing the hoops. I have, I have a diploma in the other room that showed me that. And I remember the last game, we had to beat Real Madrid to, to be champ, became champions. And we won 2-0. And I remember I scored the first goal. That was back in March or April 1975. Great memories. <laughs> Ah, good memories. They never disappear. And then pushing on then, because obviously you went, you went, you went traveling to see Celtic in the 70s. Yeah, no, no. And then, you know, in Norway then, it was very hard to follow Celtic because the only coverage you got for, for British football was the, the English teams. And it was never Celtic on telly. Never. So, but... The Celtic support was always there for me. So when I moved to the west coast of Norway, Haugesund, it's a city between Bergen and Stavanger, suddenly the Ryanair come to the airport and we had daily flights to London. And then it was easy to get to Glasgow. But it started then we, um, we, we had uh, Charlie and the boys over in Haugesund. And then Jimmy, Chris said, whatever game we want to go to, only contact them and they have tickets. And of course, <laughs> first opportunity, we went over and for our old firm game. They called it then, in, back in <laughs> it was 2009. And then, yeah, we, we spent the weekend there and I met Angie. On the first yeah. trip? First trip. <laughs> and you fell in love. Celtic have a lot to answer for. <laughs> <laughs> you be careful, the man's just a very good friend of mine. Oh, uh, no, that's all right. I, uh, we had a long distance relationship for two years until I decided to move over. So now you're, you know, it was too hard to do to, uh, to go and see Celtic. You had to to uh, spend the whole weekend. So we uh, we met in Glasgow for two years. So during the Celtic games. So now you're, you're living in Newry. And you have you remember of Eric Bra and you can jump on a bus to any game you want now. Oh, that's so brilliant! I just say I love it to go to sleep in my own bed after a game. You know, I love it. Yeah, um, it, it, it can be nice, but um, after the the Dundee game on um, Sunday, the flight was delayed with the weather. It was it meant to be eleven o'clock flight, and it was half one of me getting home, and I, I said to myself. You know, the long old days, I, I wouldn't have minded now a couple of points after the game and, and into, into a bed in a hotel, but it, it was, it was well water because when, when the, another late goal after, you know, we had to, we had to, we had to dig our heels in on, on Sunday, Rennie. You know, it wasn't given to us. And I suppose the added pressure, even on, we, we put on ourselves as fans when the Rangers dropped points. Um, like I watched the game before, for, you know, to sell the kickoff, and this was great, like you know. And the, the but, but in, in the early day, wasn't that the rule when when uh, when we told when the Rangers missed the day before? And the same happened with us, you know, always. I but not always, it felt like always, and we had the chance not to catch up, we failed, but but that's a uh, say. We never stop. We, we we stop and it's finished, and yeah. we celebrate. That's the way to do it. Yeah, and like I suppose we're lucky now that we have um, a stronger bench than we did have. We say when we played Bayern Leverkusen when when we almost pulled off a, a memorable um, result in Germany. But you know, and probably we're a bit tin on the bench coming to the, coming up to Christmas. But he's brought in four, probably actually five players, and and John Joe. Oh, John, 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 Johnny Kenny is now back uh, training on grass. He he he's, he he arrived with a little injury, and I was, I was speaking to Willie McStay on Sunday, and I said, "Well, how's he doing?" And he says, "You know, you know, he's not a B team player." He says, "He's he's he's a first team squad player," and and just you know, he's waiting for him to get fit, and he likes what he's, he likes what he's seen and from him, and he likes the report so. You know, like it's food for thought for this young kid coming in with you know, 
after you know two years senior football at the League of Ireland, and obviously when it's an Irish player, there's a lot of interest over here, and uh, especially with the, the Sligo connection. So hopefully, hopefully Johnny gets in the team before the end of the season, or you know comes off the bench or something because. You know, we we have a stronger bench now, and that's been proven in, in you know with these late goals, and even against Aberdeen when we were you know we were coasting in the first half, mm. but then you know we we had to dig in in the second half and battle. Yeah, no, but as I say, the bench that I always when I see the bench, it makes me smile because it looks so strong, yeah. and it looks so strong, and it's really no different in quality. Whatever he, he puts in, you know, there is a, yeah, there is no subs on the, on the bank. There is, there is actually first team players that yeah. sit on the bench and only wait to 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 grab the opportunity. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then look, look, looking forward, um, obviously we hope we, well, I hope we get a result on tours. You know, um, for me, it's not a distraction. It probably should be because the Champions League and and winning the league is just, you know. It's such a big thing, you know. I'm not, I'm not thinking about booking flights to to Rana just yet. Um, no, but they haven't been wonderful to be the first British team to be in the conference. <laughs> you, you mean like the European Cup? <laughs> no, but like, the, like all, all joking aside, and like we'll all be hoping Sally win on Thursday night. I, I don't think anyone when you go when Sally go on the pitch, you want them to win, and you don't want like, you, and you don't want Danny's players to get injured, no matter if it's. A friendly or a game of tiddlywinks, as Jim Mervin said to me one day, he said, I want Sally to win a game of tiddlywinks. And that's yeah. that's how much it means to people. But, Rennie, you know, looking forward to the Hibs game now on on Sunday. We, we'll be there. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Um, get that. Um, I won't be coming to your hotel room. You, you can you can rest assured I'm getting a lift, getting a lift from the airport. Um, mm. But, like... It's going to be a tough game. Um, Hibs ha- haven't been firing on all cylinders, but Sean Maloney is starting to see a bit of light. He's under a bit of pressure. Yes. The atmosphere is going to be great. How do you see that one going? Over way. No, I, I, I'm always optimistic. But if you take player by player for player, we should beat them. But we need an early goal, as I feel. If we score in the first twenty minutes, and and and. We get them to hunt us. It 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 should be a victory for us. It it should be, but I I always think we win. I I, I have never any doubt. No, yeah. Never any doubt. And therefore, the, the disappointment is so big when it's not happened. Yeah, well, the farm on the range has been, you know, it's been since we come back from the break. You know, it's been mm. apart from the Bodo Glimp game. It's been it's been outstanding. No, and, and the football we play, you know, it's so lovely to watch them. And yeah, it's it's no luck any longer, you know. So you don't have to pray. They only let the boys play the way they can play football and the way ants want them to play. And then we will win. And on Andreni, uh, now I know I know you a lot better than our listeners or our, or our viewers. And hopefully we'll get you back on because I, I know your love for football and I know your knowledge of football. Well, you know, but after the season we had last year, like you know, Ange came in and you know he arrived on his own, and he just see it. You know, I don't think any of us expected him to turn it around so quick. We gave him a chance, and he's just been a breath of fresh air. Yeah, no, it, it's unbelievable. So when you compare to last season, and I, uh, I have to admit, I gave up the league pretty early. No, in October, November, you could see that there, there was nothing. There was nothing to how to explain it. Anyway, I gave up the way we played football and the way everything was with uh, one scandal after the after the other. You know, it, it it was too much that disrupted us. So, and now the way he came in and turned it around, and as, as you said, no one thought that he could do it so fast, so fast. Yeah, and it, so so two, two. You're predicting two wins this week, Rennie. Yes, I uh, am. Yeah. As, as someone said to me the other day, I hope, I hope we win. I hope we win in Norway, but um, we get knocked out. 
So too long. So, so someone said to me, I forget, someone said that to me on Sunday. But um, now oh, we're, we're, we're looking for two wins, Randy. We're looking to progress. A winning team. Yeah, but as I said, if we score two goals, it's extra time. If we win 2 0, it's extra time. And can, can you not see them scoring at home? Yeah, yeah it's dependent on us. But uh, we, if we score early and say people say that look what they did against Rome, but you have to remember uh, Mourinho, he does he he took his team up to the border the same day they played, and he didn't uh, bother to have a, a session on the pitch before the game, and you know some of the, the star players was left home, so he thought it was a, a walkover. We know it's not a walkover when it comes up there. So do you think do you think Rennie he'll he'll play his best eleven? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. So what is the best eleven with the bench we have? You know, so we will whatever team we put on the pitch is a strong team. No, it doesn't matter. It's a Tom Roach's player or Matt O'Reilly play. No, he play. It, that doesn't matter. It's a strong team anyway. And then he can make he he can still bring in. As good as for the Hibs game, or vice versa. Ah, ah of course, but I, I think uh, Goku Marcus, he will start. We need that strong, tall guy against them. But you can see the, the size of the the border defender. So all over the pitch, they look they, look, they look yeah. bigger than uh, us. Mm-hmm. So so there was two from Sunday. Right, you look right. Tia Marcus was was you know first touch in the net you know three yes. first touch goals excellent stuff so yeah he's 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 got the jersey now for, for up front but Greg Taylor was dropped on Sunday and he brought um, he brought Tony Rasden back in on the right so like you know full back wise the, you know does he does he go for, does he go back to Taylor or do, or do you think he sticks he sticks with the, with the Croatian lad I think he stick with the Croatian, or maybe he. If you think about the Hips game, maybe he let Taylor play. You know, you never know, but you never know. I don't know. I wish I knew. Well, 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 well. We all, we all do. Um, no, it's, 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 it's a good time to follow Celtic. Uh, we didn't get a result last Thursday night, but um, I think I think everyone's been in, in, in enjoying the journey, you know. So no matter who plays, as you say, there's does, does strength there on the bench and strength to come in on Sunday. So Renny, I'll um I'll see you Sunday and uh Yeah. So sure, sure. we we'll talk then and maybe have a cup of tea before the game. Oh uh, yeah, you come to my hotel and I make sure we have a pot of tea done in, in the reception. Uh, I'm worried about the pots of tea you'd be making what's in them. <laughs> Right, Randy. Uh, folks, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, hit the hit the subscribe button there. Uh, hit the follow button. Hit the alarm button. Leave a comment. Whatever you have to do. And uh, thanks very much for watching Celtic Fans and TV. And also to my guest, Randy Hansen, all the way from Norway, but living in Yuri. And uh, the the podcast is also available on audio on the Celtic Soul podcast across all platforms. So, folks, enjoy the week. Hail, hail.